Thank God. Almighty God's words cleared up long-standing confusions for me. Mm. In my faith, I used to pray to the Lord and confess a lot, but I still could not help but lie and sin again later. If something didn't go my way, I would lose my temper, and I could not keep the Lord's teachings or free myself from sin. It really hurt my soul. I asked many pastors about it, but they never found a solution. I would think, the Lord is holy, so how could someone like me who lives in sin get into His kingdom? When I read Almighty God's words, I finally found the path to be cleansed of corruption. Thanks be to God. As a new believer, I went to a Presbyterian church. Our pastor would always say to us, we are sinful, we are filled with sin. However, fear not. The Lord Jesus was crucified to be our sin offering. As long as we pray and confess to the Lord, He will forgive us. And when He returns, He'll take us up into heaven. I was so grateful to the Lord and felt how great His love for us truly is. Yes. yes. Every time I told a lie or sinned, I prayed, confess, and repent, and get a sense of peace and joy. I couldn't wait for the Lord to take me into His kingdom. But over time, I found that sinning and confessing had become routine for me. I was particularly stubborn and lost my temper very easily. If my husband had said or did anything I didn't like, I'd get on his case and argue with him for a while. But later, I'd regret it by not having any patience, especially in reading the Lord's words, love your neighbor as yourself. I felt absolutely terrible. I felt incapable of being patient with my own family, much less loving others. I went to the pastor and vented about my frustrations many times, seeking a path to escape sin, but they just told me to pray and confess more. My confusion remained, and I wondered if I could meet the Lord's will or ever get into heaven, committing the same old sins after praying and confessing. Not a chance. The Bible says, for if we sin willfully after we receive the knowledge of the truth, no sacrifice for sin remains. That made me feel very frightened and unsettled. But I didn't know what else to do. I just prayed more, and I asked the Lord to give me the strength to not sin. I'd try to control myself in the moment, but I was still clutched by my sin. Over time, this left me exhausted and depressed. I would get out of bed at all hours and pray to the Lord in tears, asking Him to help me find a path to escape my sin. A friend later invited me to join her church. After going for a little while, I realized the pastor's sermons were largely the same and contained no light, and he didn't talk about escaping sin. I was really disappointed. 
especially when I saw the elder who served in the church for forty years, who seemed devout and a well-respected figure, would go preach at fancy places, greedy for the pleasures of the flesh. It was a real blow when I saw that he hadn't changed, not at all, his whole life. I thought of God's words, You shall therefore be holy, for I am holy. Amen. Those living in sin are unworthy of beholding God. That's, That's right. right. So can they enter his kingdom? No, no, of course not. That elder hadn't changed at all in 40 years of faith, so it seemed even harder for me to change. The pastor and elders would comfort us saying, the Lord Jesus was crucified and redeemed us of our sins, so we shouldn't worry about sinning. But the reality was, we constantly sinned, and we were full of filth after years of faith. Mm, true. God is holy. So how could sinful people like us look upon the Lord's face? Yeah, yeah, yeah. we couldn't, do, we that. couldn't yeah. do that. These thoughts were so painful to me and left me feeling so lost. I wondered how I could free myself from sin. So what happened? I thought of my good friend, Sister Jishu. She was a devout and thoughtful believer. I figured I would talk to her. But then I remembered that she believed in Almighty God for years, and our pastor insisted that we should stay away from believers in Almighty God. I hesitated at that point. But then I thought about how I was trapped in sin, and the pastor didn't have any answers. Yes. And she had also been a good friend for years and was of great caliber, so I thought she might have some suggestions. Right. I decided to set a date to go see her. When we met, I saw a few unfamiliar faces there. They all looked dignified and upright, and they were friendly. I figured they were from the Church of Almighty God, so I started to put my guard up. And when they started discussing faith, I wasn't taking in what they said, and I didn't want to talk. Then one sister said in fellowship, A lot of believers in God think that the Lord Jesus Christ took on our sin by being crucified, that God no longer sees our sin, so we're not sinful anymore. And the Lord will take us into His kingdom when He comes, but is that right? Even though our sins are forgiven through faith in the Lord Jesus, we don't sin as obviously and we appear to behave well. Does that mean we've been thoroughly cleansed of our sin? No, no. We constantly lie in sin. We're jealous and hateful. We're full of arrogance and deceit, and we're always talking down to others. We follow secular trends. We're greedy and we're vain. We judge and blame the Lord when something we don't like happens. This shows we haven't remotely escaped the bonds and fetters of sin. And this is the state that all believers live in. It is. It is. That is it so is, true. Right? It is, right? Yeah. Just like Paul said in Romans 7, For I have the desire to perform what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. The Apostle Paul had all of his sins forgiven by the Lord Jesus. However, his greatest frustration was that he was still bound by sin and could not escape it. He just couldn't help but sin all the time, which is why he cried out helplessly, Wretched man I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Don't we all share Paul's frustration? Yes, yes. of course we, of course we do. Yes. Definitely. Her words stirred my heart. That truly was my greatest frustration. I couldn't hold back this question. What you just said is very true. I really do keep sinning and confessing, living in sin, and it's painful for me. Indeed. But what I don't understand is, the Lord Jesus already redeemed us and forgave our sins. So why do we keep sinning so much? Why can't we escape sinfulness? At this rate, will we be taken into His kingdom? In response, she read a couple passages of Almighty God's words. Almighty God says, Though man has been redeemed and forgiven of his sins, it is only considered as God not remembering the transgressions of man and not treating man in accordance with man's transgressions. However, when man lives in the flesh, 
and he has not been set free from sin. He can only continue to sin, endlessly revealing the corrupt satanic disposition. This is the life that man leads, an endless cycle of sin and forgiveness. The majority of men sin in the day, only to confess in the evening. As such, even if the sin offering is forever effective for man, it would not be able to save man from sin. Only half the work of salvation has been completed, for man still has corrupt disposition. It is not easy for man to become aware of his sins. Man is unable to recognize his own deeply rooted nature. Only through judgment by the word can such effects be achieved. Only thus can man gradually be changed from that point onward. Though Jesus did much work among man, he only completed the redemption of all mankind and became man's sin offering and did not rid man of all his corrupt disposition. Fully saving man from the influence of Satan not only required Jesus to take on the sins of man as the sin offering, but also required God to do greater work to completely rid man of his disposition, which has been corrupted by Satan. And so, after man was forgiven his sins, God has returned to flesh to lead man into the new age and begun the work of chastisement and judgment. And this work has brought man into a higher realm. All those who submit under his dominion shall enjoy higher truth and receive greater blessings. They shall truly live in the light and shall gain the truth, the way, and the life. Amen. Then the sister fellowshiped. In the age of grace, the Lord Jesus was crucified as mankind's sin offering. So as long as we accept him as our Savior, confess and repent, then our sins are forgiven, and we won't be condemned to death under the law. We can pray directly to the Lord and enjoy his grace. This is the true meaning of the Lord Jesus' work of redemption. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. For sure. <laughs> However, he only forgave man's sins through his redemption work. He didn't absolve our satanic dispositions or our sinful nature. Although our sins are forgiven through our faith, our sinful nature and satanic dispositions are deeply rooted within us. Yeah. These include arrogance, selfishness, baseness, deceit, and greed. These satanic corrupt dispositions are even more stubborn than sin itself. They are the root of sinning and resisting God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yes. If we don't resolve our sinful nature, we just sin, confess, and sin and sin again, never free of the shackles of sin, totally unworthy of God's kingdom. Mm, that's true. God said, You shall therefore be holy, for I am holy. Amen. Amen. The Lord Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever commits sin is the servant of sin, and the servant stays not in the house forever, but the son stays ever. Yes. Yes. The Lord is holy, so no unholy person can look upon him. How could people like us who often sin and resist the Lord be worthy of seeing his face or entering his kingdom? Yes. Mm -hmm. So then, how can the problem of our sinful nature be resolved? The Lord Jesus prophesied, I have yet many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of the truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. And 1 Peter 4.17 says, For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. Yes. Yeah. In the last days, God becomes flesh again and expresses truths to do the work of judgment beginning at the house of God. This is mainly to resolve mankind's sinful nature, completely free us from sin, and cleanse us of our corruption so we're fully saved and can enter his kingdom. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. God's work in the age of grace enabled us to be forgiven of our sins, but it couldn't totally rid us of our sin. 
God's work of judgment in the last days is the core and focus of His work of cleansing and salvation. It's the most crucial stage of His work to save mankind. It is. It is. Only the judgment work of the last days can work all the truths we need into us so we can truly know God, have our life dispositions transformed, and become people who obey and worship God who meet His will. This will complete God's management plan to save mankind. Yeah, Amen. Right. that's right. Thanks be to God. Her fellowship really opened my eyes. I realized I couldn't help but keep sinning and confessing because my sinful nature hadn't been resolved. I hadn't experienced the most crucial stage of God's work in my faith. I was dying to know how Almighty God actually does His work of judgment in the last days to cleanse people. Of course. The pastor had always condemned the Church of Almighty God, so I was wary, cautious, so to speak. In reconsidering it, though, all those years, he'd claimed we were no longer of sin. But I was trapped in the pain of my own sinfulness. My experience was all too real. I knew I couldn't blindly listen to the pastor anymore, but I had to properly read Almighty God's words and find out if his utterances really were the voice of God. Sadly, it was also getting late, so we couldn't continue our fellowship. However, when this sister later invited me to visit the church, I didn't turn her down, and I accepted a book of God's word she gave me. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. So I began to seek and investigate this way, and I read a lot of Almighty God's words. I saw that He unveils so many mysteries, like the mysteries of God's incarnations, as well as His names, the inside story of the Bible, and more. Everything was so new, and they were all truths and mysteries I'd never heard before. That's great. Yes, yes that's great. Almighty God has revealed these heavenly mysteries, and He can express God's will to save mankind. No human being could do that. Yes. 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 Almighty God's words, very likely, are the Holy Spirit's words to the churches, the voice of God. I really have to look into this. Yes. I also told these brothers and sisters about my own problem of lying and sinning, losing my temper with others, lacking patience, and not keeping the Lord's teachings. I told them my life in sin pained me. I asked a sister, how does... God do the work of judgment in the last days to cleanse people. Through my years of faith, I always thought it would be so great if we can live free of sin, then life wouldn't be painful. Yes. She gave me some passages of Almighty God's words to read that I'd like to share. Okay. okay. God's work in the present incarnation is to express His disposition primarily through chastisement and judgment. Upon this foundation, he brings more truth to man and shows him more ways to practice. And thereby, he conquers man and saves him from his own corrupt disposition. This is what lies behind the work of God in the age of kingdom. Amen. 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 I'd like to read a passage. Great. In the last days, Christ uses a variety of truths to teach man, to expose the essence of man, and to dissect the words and deeds of man. These words are comprised of a variety of truths, such as man's duty, how man should obey God, how man should be loyal to God, how man ought to live out normal humanity, as well as the wisdom and the disposition of God. These words are all directed at the essence of man and his corrupt disposition. In particular, the words that expose how man spurns God are spoken in regard to how man is an embodiment of Satan and how man is an enemy force against God. In his work of judgment, God does not clarify man's nature with just a few words. He exposes, deals with, and prunes over the long term. These methods of exposure, dealing, and pruning can by no means be substituted with ordinary words, but with the truth of which man is utterly bereft. Only such methods can be called judgment. Such judgment is all that can subdue man, convince them to submit to God, and get them to truly know God. What the work of judgment brings about is man's understanding of the true face of God and the truth about his own rebelliousness. 
The work of judgment allows man to gain much understanding of the will of God, as well as of the purpose of God's work, and come to know about the mysteries that are incomprehensible to him. It also allows man to recognize and know his corrupt substance and the roots of his corruption, as well as to discover the ugliness of man. These effects are all brought about by the work of judgment. For this work's substance is the work of opening up the truth, way, and life of God to all those who have faith in him. This work is the work of judgment done by God. Amen. Amen. I'll read the next one. Go, Go ahead. ahead. Okay. By means of this work of judgment and chastisement, man will fully come to know the filthy and corrupt substance within his own self and he will be able to change completely and become clean. Only thus can man become worthy to return before God's throne. All the work carried out this day is so that man can attain purification and be changed. Through the judgment of the word and refinement, man can be cleansed of his corruption. Rather than deeming this stage of work to be that of salvation, it would be more apt to say it is the work of purification. Amen. Amen. After reading this, the sister went on with her fellowship. In the judgment work of the last days, Almighty God expresses all truths which cleanse and save mankind. He unveils the mysteries of God's 6,000-year management plan. He reveals the purpose of God's three stages of work to save mankind, the inside story, and what each stage achieves. He shows us the path to dispositional change and purification in our faith. Almighty God also reveals the nature and essence of mankind's corruption by Satan and the root of our sinfulness. This allows us to reflect on ourselves and know our satanic nature and dispositions that rebel against and oppose God. See how deeply Satan's corrupted us and that we totally lack a human likeness. Then we start to hate ourselves and we don't want to live in our corruption anymore. We also see how righteous and holy and unoffendable God's disposition truly is, and we can't help but develop reverence for Him. We're no longer arbitrary, and we don't do as we please anymore. Instead, we start to forsake the flesh and practice the truth. We gradually cast off the bonds of satanic dispositions, and this resolves our sinfulness and opposition to God at its root. This is something that can never be achieved by those who believe in the Lord but don't accept God's judgment and cleansing of the last days. Amen. Amen. That's true. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. others also shared their testimonies of undergoing judgment through God's words. <laughs> Please tell us about it. Mm -hmm. A sister told us that when she started out as a church leader, she cared about her name and status. She loved lording over others and being listened to. And when someone had a different opinion, She'd always make them accept her own view. She always showed off, preaching doctrine. But by being judged by Almighty God's words, she realized that she was showing off at her duty and tried very hard to get people to idolize her. This was a satanic disposition. It was deceit and entrapment. In fact, she was vying for God's status, just like the archangel. She was opposing God. She was filled with regret when she realized that and hated how arrogant and shameless she was. She'd been offending God's righteous disposition. If she didn't repent, she knew she'd be eliminated by God. Definitely. She also saw how righteous, holy, and unoffendable God's disposition is, and she came to fear God. Being judged and chastised this way multiple times, she truly understood her own arrogant nature, then came to detest herself. She wasn't as arrogant or showy in her duty anymore, and she became able to really open up about her own corruption. She also learned to listen to others' opinions, cooperate, and learn from them. She could live out a human likeness. Thanks, Thanks, be, to Thanks God. be to God. Hearing her fellowship was really edifying for me. I learned that to be freed from sin and have my corruption cleansed, I had to accept Almighty God's work of the last days and experience the judgment and cleansing of God's words. Yes, yeah. I never had that kind of experience and testimony. I'd spoken with so many clergy members and gone to so many churches, but I had never heard that kind of testimony before. 
The experiences of these brothers and sisters showed me the path to be fully saved and to get into God's kingdom. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. That's great. I was thrilled, and I knew from my heart that Almighty God is truly the Lord Jesus returned. Amen. Amen. Only God is so concerned for us. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. God knows our pain of living in sin, so He has become flesh and expressed truths to save mankind. His love for us is so very real. Yes. Thanks be to God. After that, I eagerly attended gatherings and read Almighty God's words and reflected on my own corruption in light of His words. Later on, my husband saw I had accepted Almighty God's work of the last days and that I wasn't as condescending and I had changed. He started to read Almighty God's words and also accepted His work in the last days. This is wonderful. Thank God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Thank God. Only God's work of judgment can remove our sinfulness and cleanse yes. our satanic dispositions. That's right. Yes. yes. Thanks, Michelle. She's got a point. I'd really Thank like to share my story next.